Uh, then she, she was as a postdoc in uh, Sofia uh, with Professor Nikolai Litanov and uh, in South America, in South, Af South Africa, sorry. South Africa with Professor Petrocione. And then uh, she moved to Turku in Finland in 2005 and uh, where she actually started a quite large group that she's still leading on uh, quantum entanglement and uh, open quantum open system. And uh, she's uh, from January 2011. She's uh, a lecturer, reader, reader in, uh, in Edinburgh uh, at the Eric Watt University. And uh, she has been working mainly in open quantum systems, and uh, she's an expert actually in Markovian dynamics. And uh, she, today she will actually give us a, a flavor of this uh, research line. And yesterday she already gave us um, an example of the broad <laughs> kind of interest she, she has. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much for that support uh, for the invitation. Uh, and I wonder, uh, do you see what should we? Uh, Turn off one of the lights? No, oh, one is off. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is no, no, this. You think this is better? Okay, so we keep it this way. Uh, yes. Um, yes, I wasn't perhaps 100% lucky with the, with the weather, but it's great to be here. Uh, and I really enjoyed uh, one time here, and I hope to be back uh, again soon. Um, and uh, so, about my talk. I will start with some outline. Actually, even before talking about non-community majors, and actually we focus on one, I will really uh, start with an introduction uh, on non-community, which would be very, very simple, general, and hand wavy just to give you some flavor and some ideas of, of the things we are talking about. And then I will focus on, the, on, on uh, specific uh, examples in which we can study non-Markovian systems and information flow and the way in which they are linked and why it is useful to study these systems. And in these specific examples, I will go more in the details and I will describe the, you know, the dynamics and, and the um, physical systems and what goes on. And these are, these are examples uh, based on um, uh, ultra-cold gases, so uh, Bose-Einstein condensates and atoms in ultra-cold gases. And finally, I will discuss um, a more theoretical, if I have time, I don't know, because I tend to talk a lot to you, and really, at some point somebody should stop me, uh, but uh, it's, it's, uh, perhaps I will have time to talk about the Gaussian measure of the Markovianity, so a measure of the Markovianity for specific continuous variable systems. And please interrupt me at any point if you have questions, because, uh, I mean, it's better to clarify them during the talk. Uh, so I will introduce first my group. This is actually an old picture. Um, uh, now there are new addition, and Laura uh, has finished her PhD and she's now in Belfast. Uh, here I was still in Turku. Uh, now uh, I'm half, well, I'm in Turku and in Edinburgh, but mostly in Edinburgh. Uh, I still have uh, some students, um, Pina and Janika and Ruggero are still in Turku in Finland. Ruggero was here uh, and actually uh, is about to be, is, is leaving. He was also visiting uh, Roberta's group. Uh, uh, the work I'm talking about so on the thesis uh, has been done mostly by my postdoc Suzanne and my PhD student Pina. Uh, in collaboration with Gabriele De Chiara uh, from Queen's University Belfast and Massimo Palma from the University of Palermo, while the second, the last part of the talk on continuous variable is something that really um, came from Ruggero, was Ruggero's idea, and was done in collaboration with Matteo Paris from the University of Milano, Jurki Pilo from the University of Turku, and Heinz Peter Breuer from Fabio. Okay, what are non Markovian open quantum systems? Uh, to say something about them, I will start with Markovian, actually, open quantum systems. And I will start with one of the possible ways uh, of describing uh, quantum systems which interact with an environment. And this way is starting from a unitary dynamics. So you imagine to have a quantum system uh, and an environment, and the total system, system plus environment, is closed. And normally, what you call the system is that part of that total system you are interested in. I mean, you want to study the dynamics of one of the observables, for example. So you define your system, and because you're interested only on this small part, even if this interacts with the environment, then what you do is that you trace out all the environmental degrees of freedom, and you make a series of approximations, 
and your aim would be to study the time evolution of the reduced density matrix of the system only, perhaps, for example, using an equation of motion for the density matrix. And what, what, what normally, in a very hand wavy way, if you want, what normally people associate with Markovianity is something that, um, uh, for which the spectrum of the energy of the reservoir is, is almost flat, so you don't have a lot of structures, and the coupling between the system and the reservoir is weak. So whenever you have a strong coupling between your system and the environment, typically you, have, you can't do these Markovian assumptions. As I said, a series of hand wavy arguments at, uh, at this stage. We will go into the proper mathematical definitions in a moment. So strong uh, system reservoir coupling is one ingredient uh, of non-Markovianity when you deviate from this approximation. And the reason is that when you have strong interactions between the system and the environment, then you build correlations between the two, and these correlations last for a time which is long compared to the typical time scales of the system dynamics. Uh, and, and, um, and these correlations need to be taken into account using non-Markovian approaches. Normally, this correlation time, tau, is um, somehow related to the width of the spectrum of energies, so the bandwidth of the spectrum of the energies of the reservoir. Very often, I, ask, I think when I talk about a reservoir, I very often think in terms of a bosonic infinite numbers of modes of reservoir. You can have, obviously, also spin environments. Um, some physical systems for which a non-Markovian description is necessary, so the Markovian approximation doesn't work well, are photonic crystals because of the spectrum. I mean, the spectrum is really very, you, know, you have parts of the spectrum in photonic crystals which are basically zero. So if you're close to the edge, then you, you need to have uh, a non-Markovian description. Josephson junctions, typically they have this one of the F noise. Uh, and we will see the, the case of BECs. And nowadays, also in many uh, biological systems where quantum effects uh, perhaps play a role, it seems that there are indications that actually non Markovianity can play, we play, plays a role, because this, the type of structure in biological systems of the reservoir, the modes, um, is such that you need to take into account the correlations and the establishment of correlations. About the mathematical structure, the, generally the, the mathematical structure of a Markovian master equation uh, is, is this one, this is called the Limblad form, this is the reduced density matrix of the, of the quantum system, and you have a series of uh, decay channels, the decay rates constant being uh, these gamma i's and they are positive constant values, these are called the Limblad operator or quantum jumps operators. And you can use uh, some methods, some of you might be familiar with, uh, with, with this um, method to, to describe the dynamics, which is the Monte Carlo function approach based on quantum jumps to unravel the dynamics. It's very useful because actually there are some problems in quantum optics that can be tackled only using uh, the Monte Carlo um, uh, wave function approach, like for example 3D laser technique. Obviously the first idea you might have, well, okay, um, if this is a Markovian master equation, then a non-Markovian master equation is, you know, anything that I can't write in this form, anything that deviates from this form. And this is the point of view that a lot of people had for a long time, as it is, and still some people have. Some people. The problems with this sort of idea or definition is that, first of all, it is not always easy to see whether a master equation can be cast in a limbat form or not. This, this, you may have a master equation, and, and you, which is not in this form, but in principle might be recast in this form, and you just don't know how to do it. So that's not a good definition because it depends on, on, on this problem, on, on this form. And then the other issue is, okay, what are actually the physical features of non-Markovian systems? Because this is just a master equation, it doesn't tell me much as I look at it only, on the, on the physics behind. So what is really the physics behind non-Markovian systems? One of the nice properties of, of this type of master equations that I want to mention at this stage, because it's worth really knowing and reminding, remembering this thing, is that, uh, and this is also the reason why people uh, really use extensively Markovian descriptions in quantum optics, for example. One of the nice properties is, is, um, is, is given by a theorem, the Lindblad, gorini kosakowski and Sudarshan theorem, which guarantees that if I have a master equation of this time, 
Then the density matrix, um, and if I start with a physical state, so a density matrix, uh, I will, the, the state will be um, physical at all times. So for example, the density matrix, the, the evolution will preserve uh, trace and, and positivity of the operator. So that's nice because I don't have to care about, you know, if I'm, if I'm describing the system in, in some unphysical way. So any time, at any time uh, of the evolution, the, an initial physical state will be, will continue to be physical state. This is, um, unfortunately, and this is uh, Lim that I will not go into details. Yeah, I was discussing with him about, obviously I asked him, uh, he works at KTH in, in Stockholm, and I asked him about, uh, you know, how come you ended up with these results. And it's an interesting story, but perhaps like, if you are interested, I will say later on. Now I don't have time, perhaps, to go uh, into this detail. Now, the problem of non markovian system, now I'm making an example, look at the previous equation. So in this equation, these are positive and constant. Now, what I'm saying is that this type of equations here, with these coefficients, the, the operatorial form is the same. Again, I have the Hamiltonian of the system, the jump operators. But this coefficient now is time dependent with uh, including the case in which it can take temporarily negative value. This is an example of a non-Markovian master equation, but it is not the most general example. It is just one class. Now, one of the problems with this, with this uh, description is that, in general, if I start assuming that this is the equation of motion of the system, the Lindbergh theorem doesn't hold, and therefore I, I can never be sure that the system, if I start from a physical state, the solution of this master equation is still physical. So because this type of evolutions do not preserve positivity and complete positivity of the map. And this means we have to be very careful when we deal with non-Markovian systems and when we use master equations, I say in a phenomenological way. What I mean is just giving, you know, starting from a physical intuition tells me, well, this is an equation I need to start. So, so the, the, yes. when, when you go to non-Markovian, what changes is that gamma A depends on time, but you keep the same structure for the rest? As I said, this is not the most general. Yeah, I understand, but this is what you are going to consider. Uh, um, well, this is one of the uh, possible ways of considering it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and the, it will be consistent in some cases with the definition I will give in a moment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, because the, the, in, in the talk, what I will do is uh, tell you what happened a couple of years ago when a series of people started to inquire, shall we really try to have uh, a physical definition of normal community? And then they gave the definition. But this is one of the examples. Now, Another problem with non-Markovian systems is that um, we do not even know, so the, the, the absence of the Lindbergh theorem, even for these types of systems, when, when they are always positive, it's okay. You can, you can extend the, the, the Markovian, the Lindbergh, Green, Kostakowski uh, result. They, they are, let's say, it's not a, the dynamical map is not a dynamical semigroup, but still you can obtain the same result, as, as long as these are fine. But uh, when they temporarily take negative values, then uh, you don't have the Lindbergh theorem. And we do not know which is the most general form of a master equation corresponding to a completely positive and trace-preserving dynamical map. So physical means, I mean physical master equation, even for a cubic. We do not know which type of properties of the spectrum, for example, must be satisfied to have a physically valid description of a master equation in the beyond the Markovian approximation, <coughs> even for a cubic. So it's sort of a, apparently quite a complicated problem. Now, go back, I go back to the problem of the definition of the Markovian theory. Different people in different communities use different definitions of Markovian or non-Markovian. Um, many associate uh, non-Markovianity with something which is not in Lingard form, a master equation not in Lingard form. Other people think that the key feature has to be some dependence on the initial condition of the, of the, the system. Other people say there must be some memory kernel. What, is, what this means is, for me, non-Markovianity, some people say, has to be something for which the time evolution of the system depends also on its past. So I have to have an integral um, you know, over the past history of the system. So it's an integral differential equation. 
And, uh, and then some other people associate and say, okay, no, we, I can also have a time local description, as I said before, but I need to have negative decay rates. Uh, in 2008, 2009, 2010, so quite recently, there were a series of um, um, papers that I cite here uh, that um, try to give definitions of Markovianity and non Markovianity. Um, according to the ideas, let's say, I, I summarized before. In, in this first paper, actually, the Wolf, Heiser, Kubit, and Chirac, they do not consider a definition of Markovian, of non-Markovian dynamics for a dynamical map. So this is just, they, they, they simply use some uh, channel approach. And, but it is not, uh, they are not describing uh, the Markovianity or non-Markovianity of a dynamical map, so I will not focus on this one. But anyway, this is, is closely related to the, the idea of Markovian is a dynamical semigroup in a lingered form, basically. Uh, but it, as a matter of fact, they consider only fixed times, so they don't take all the family of dynamical maps. Uh, I will focus on this definition, uh, which is the, the, second, the well, second one in this case, which it, it is the one associated to information flow and flowback of information, while the last one is related to the visibility of the dynamical map. But anyway, since now on, uh, my main uh, focus will be on this definition for the reasons I will explain. But if you are more interested in this topic, you can check all the other references too. As I said, this definition has to do with backflow of information. Uh, and then it obviously tries to quantify a property of a non-Markovian reservoir, which is the existence of memory. So normally what you say is that uh, a quantum system interacting with a reservoir shows a non-Markovian behavior if there is some memory of the previous state of the system. And this memory is associated to the fact that, that some information which is lost when the system interacts with the environment can flow back because of this existence of memory or finite correlation time. And how do you quantify mathematically this concept? is introducing uh, the concept of state distinguishability, so distinguishability between two quantum states. So take any, consider a given quantum system and take any pair of initial states. If it's a qubit, you can imagine a block sphere, for example. So two, two of, um, for example, antipodal state would be two maximum distinguishable state initially. When you look at the dynamics, what you do is to look how the distinguishability between these states evolves in time, because you will be losing distinguishability. The distinguishability is defined in terms of trace, mathematically, in terms of trace distance. So the trace distance is a proper measure, and this is the mathematical object we are going to uh, focus on. And the whole idea, the reason why this, this measure was also chosen, is that, of course, uh, uh, if the dynamical map describing the time evolution of the system uh, is a completely positive and trace-preserving map, then uh, the uh, distinguishability is contractive. So, um, so the map is contractive. So the distinguishability is always decreasing. So if I start from, uh, uh, for example, excited and ground state, or to a type of state, during the dynamics, I let the system evolve. And at a time t, greater than the, than the initial time, the two states will be less distinguishable than they were at the beginning of the evolution. So I always lose distinguishability, if you want. The state becomes more and more similar. And the idea is that this decrease in distinguishability is seen as some information on my system that is lost into the environment. Because the states are more similar, I'm losing information on the system, which goes into the environment. Okay. So this is the idea behind this measure. But now, um, we have to um, imagine that two possible scenarios can exist. The first one is, is the one I, I described just before. <coughs> I start from the block sphere uh, grounded excited initial time zero. I let the system evolve. At the time t equal to four, the distinguishability between the, st the distance, if you want, between the state is this one, so the states are less distinguishable. 
And this can happen just in this way. Okay? They become just more distinguishable. But another thing can happen in exactly the same system. I can have an evolution in which I start in this way. This starts becoming more distinguishable. Then it increases, and then it decreases again. At the final time, t, I'm considering, they will be exactly at the same position. But while the decrease in distinguishability here is monotonic, in this case it is not. There has been a previous instance of time in which the distinguishability has increased temporarily. And in this case, that, that interval of time in which the distinguishability increases is associated to a backflow of information because you gain information on the state. The states become more distinguishable than they were before. So in the steady state, yes. both dynamics are normal? Sorry, in that? In the steady state, in you wait long enough? Uh, yes, uh, for example, it can happen, it depends actually, but for example, it can happen that eventually they reach the same state states. I mean, there are many examples in which there is an invariant state, that's actually the stationary state of the system, and in both cases you can reach the same one. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some systems in which, depending on the parameters, the dynamics can be Markovian or non Markovian. So if you tune this parameter, you can uh, observe in some cases a decrease of distinguishability monotonic, so Markovianity. In another case, you can observe a non-monotonic behavior, so Markov, sorry, Markovianity versus non-Markovianity, but the final station state is the same. So if you introduce the rate of change of distinguishability, when the distinguishability is always decreasing, then you have the rate of change is negative or equal to zero, then you define this as Markovian, in other case, you define this as non-Markovian. Now, I have to stress, this now is a definition. Okay. You can now ask what's the relationship with the, everything I said before, correlation time, presence of memory kernel, limited form. We, we, can, we have studied, actually, the, the um, connections between these things. But now, starting point, since now on, is that this is a new definition of non -Markovian. The way that there is step number two, not only you want to define Markovian or Markovian, but you want to, to quantify it. So what they did is to introduce a measure of, non of non Markovianity to quantify whether a certain system can be more non Markovian than another. Okay, so the, the measure is obviously the measure has to be independent on the pair of states. Can't depend on because it has to quantify the dynamical evolution, so the dynamical map. So what they do is that they consider, they sum all the intervals in which the, the flow of information, the flow of distinguishability is positive. So you would have non-Markovianity. You really sum all these intervals uh, and you maximize over all the possible initial states, pairs of initial states. So there is a number in the end, eventually, and this will quantify non-Markovianity, will be the measure of non-Markovianity. And by the way, very recently, uh, this, this, um, uh, using this definition, uh, this is an example of a physical system in which changing a parameter, you can observe a crossover between the non-Markovian and Markovian behavior. It's a completely optical setup, and I, I will not um, describe it in detail, but it's just to say that the measure seems very difficult to calculate, in fact, because you have to optimize overall pairs of initial states. But it can be done, in some cases, it can be done analytically for simple cases, like in this one. And the experiments that have been performed, the, the paper was out in, in September this year, 2011. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes that whether something is Markovian or not depends on your level of description and depends on whether you use some variables or other variables. A problem might be Markovian some variables and non Markovian other variables. But what you're saying is a property of the system. So, uh, okay. so you need to have a system which is not just non Markovian, then find a clever change of variables and change that into a Markovian system. Uh, no, uh, um, I'm sorry, perhaps I, I didn't explain myself well. I didn't mean a change of variable, but what I meant is imagine that you have a physical.
physical parameter. For example, the detuning of a laser from your, um, you know, from the of a specific electronic transition. If you change this physical parameter, it's like changing the frequency of the laser. Then you can go from a Markovian to a non-Markovian regime. But I'm not saying that if you change variables in the physical, in, in the mathematical description then you, you go from a code to a code. So you need to change an external parameter to adjust external parameters. Uh, this is uh, one part of the answer. But the second part is that, as a matter of fact, um, somehow, homogeneity is not a property of the system only. It is a property of the system, of the environment, and of the country. Right? And, and of the level of the very you use to describe the system. So Markovianity is not the property of the system. It's the property of the description of the system. Um, and in a way, uh, the, uh, at this I, I, I wouldn't say so, because I, I tell you what I mean. Uh, what you do in this definition is uh, take the place instance space or the definition. Sorry. Well, okay, perhaps I have to look at the place distance. So you have to imagine you, take, you, you don't even write a mass equation here. You have all the possible pairs of initial states. And then you let them evolve. They will evolve as they have to evolve physically. I'm not giving any description. I'm not using any parameters. And I'm not using any level of description. Okay? And they will evolve only in one way. Okay? The system evolves as physically has to evolve. Then I can build, I can calculate the trace distance as time evolves for all the pairs, and then I can calculate the measure optimizing over all the pairs of initial states, and the result will be in principle, if I know the description mathematically, this would be easy to calculate, but from experience, you can just make an experiment in which you don't even assume a form of the master equation. You make tomography at all times, and that's the only way in which the system can behave. It cannot change. It is a number associated. But then if, if I would not optimize over the initial state, then you could tell me, OK, this definition depends on the initial state. But if I do optimize, it just depends on the physics of the, of the system. The, the point is she's talking in quantum mechanics, which yes. the, the, one assumes that the maximal description of the system is the, is the basic matrix that there is nothing else. So yes. That you, can, you don't have any more fundamental variables than this. Yes. It's different exactly. in classical physics, which you can define your description, and then eventually go to a Markovian description. But this is not the same. Sometimes the change from Markovian to non Markovian doesn't define it. It's a big change. It means that you foresee a position, which you change from position velocity or quantity that are examples in which you simply throw those points and there are different laws of description. Okay, okay we discussed that. But in a quantum sense, what I mean is that if I know the dynamic and right, so I know the state, the initial time, and the total subsequent times, then what, I mean, this will keep, but perhaps we are saying the same thing, but we will continue later. If I don't change anything in the system, Okay, and I know just exactly the dynamical map, then I can associate Markovian to or non Markovian. This is my, my but we can discuss later on that. Now, um, just, just to mention, in case you are interested, of course, we have done a series of comparisons, not only between the different non Markovianity measures, but for example, we studied the, using this definition a memory kernel master equation. Um, is Markovian or non Markovian in terms of information flow? And there are cases in which a memory kernel master equation, a phenomenological memory kernel master equation with that simple exponential uh, kernel, is Markovian in terms of information flow. So that the information is, uh, goes just in one direction, consistent to environment, even if you have a kernel of memory. So there are all, all possible types of studies that one can do on these systems. But um, I, want, I want to summarize, before going to a specific physic, physical example to study, I want to summarize some properties of, of this definition. And the thing is that some things I like and some things which can be sort of, uh, uh, would, I would like to, if, if they were better, I mean, somehow. But the, the good things are, first of all, that it is independent from the form of the mass equation. When you, if you want to have an experiment, and if the experimenter is able to do tomography of state, 
you just at, at all times, obviously, and there are experiments like the one I, I, I showed before, the reference I showed before, which they can do it. You don't need to assume a model. You just follow the dynamics of the density matrix at all times, and you, from the definition, can say if the dynamics is Markovian or non Markovian. The other thing is that it, it is connected to some physical insight. So to, the information flow um, is connected intuitively to the presence of a memory effect. If I have backflow information, something is, is coming back into my system. And this can be associated to, to the existence of memory or normal reality. The, difficult, the, the negative sides are, might be difficult to calculate. I mean, it has been done and studied for several systems, but uh, qubit system, we extended it uh, to continuous variable, but it is not always easy to calculate it numerically. Uh, in some cases, you can even calculate it analytically, but numerically, can have, there can be difficulties. Obviously, it is clear to increase the, Hilbert, the dimension of the Hilbert space, everything becomes more complicated. When you have to optimize over all pairs of initial states, it becomes quite a mess. Uh, and then, um, then you may ask, this is more a question of principle, okay? Uh, yes, we decided, they decided actually, to use trace systems and distinguishability to measure information flow. But there are other ways of defining information and information flow. You can use another measure, for example, you can use Fisher information, there, there exists in the literature several other ways uh, of measuring. Fisher information is one, relative entropy is another one between two states. So you can really, let's say, in principle, change the, the mathematical quantity um, that defines the distinguishability, or the, sorry, the distance between the two states. And you would like to have ordered the quantifier of information. And you, the question is, if this has physically, you know, um, some meaning, and you want to find consistent results, when you change the, the, the measure of information. Uh, on a positive note, we, this is a very preliminary result. We do have a connection between at least four different measures <laughs> of information in a simple defacing uh, the channel. Numerically, in some cases, they do exactly coincide. So that's a nice and positive thing, but in general, it's very difficult to do. Okay, let's go to now one example. Um, which, how long time do I still have? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. So I, I think I will mostly focus on this example and, and skip the motion measure of the Markovian. Let's see. Now, the system we study uh, is um, a system in which one uh, ultra cold atomic gas, a BEC, for example, rubidium, uh, is trapped in a very shallow potential uh, so that we can consider more or less the BEC. Uh, the the, the Bose-Einstein condensate more or less uh, homogeneous. And then we have an, op uh, um, an optical lattice, actually it's called a super lattice, so it's a lattice of double well potentials. And another atomic species, for example sodium, is trapped in the optical lattices. So you have two different atomic species and they are sensitive to different potentials. Okay, so basically the, the sodium is just sensitive to what I call here the A, and then rubidium to Vb. So now what I will call the spin here, I will talk about a spin or a qubit. The spin or a qubit here is simply given by the atom in the right or left, actually it's right or left, uh, um, well of the double well potential. So what I'm assuming is that this uh, potential barrier here is high enough to neglect tunneling. So there is no tunneling here going on. And there can be just one atom, either here or there. So this is my cube. And, and obviously what happens is that because this, uh, this system here is uh, immersed in a BEC, there will be collisions. And these collisions will affect, if I prepare this, this qubit in a superposition of atom in the right or in the left, um, well, this, they will uh, cause the coherence of the superposition. So you basically will be defacing as you will see. Now, uh, just a note, the, the BC here is considered, it's not an ideal gas, what we consider is a real interacting gas. And this will be crucial uh, in the description of the dynamics. So the total, um, the formalism actually um, was developed before us by Cirone de Chiara Palma and Recati. And so the total system will be 
um, in, in sec using sec second quantization formalism, there will be the Hamiltonian for the atom here, the Hamiltonian for the, for the uh, ultra cold gas that we will see here, and the atom BC interaction. As I said, it's just collisions, so you, you can only have collisions between the two. So from this formalism, which is really generally the starting point of all the BEC treatments, uh, we pass to, or they pass to, uh, a description in terms of spin and bosonic modes. Um, so the pseudo spin Bogoliubov Hamiltonian, which is given by this form. So it, it's just introducing the Bogoliubov modes at this point. So from here to here, um, I'm still looking at the dynamics of the total closed system, and I'm assuming that the system, that the DC is at zero temperature, basically. So the volume of modes describe the excitations in the BEC, uh, and they are given by this uh, creation and annihilation operators, uh, and the pseudo spin, as I said, is just right or left, uh, atom in the right or left way. Uh, and the um, energy is given, of course, by the dispersion relationship for the volume of mode. And what is important here is that uh, these coefficients, you see, this part describes the interaction between the spin and the BEC. The modes. Now, now obviously, uh, the Bogolubo modes are free modes. I, 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 I passed from a description in which I have interacting particles obviously, to a description of free uh, bosons, which are the Bogolubo modes. And, and the GK is the new coupling constant between the spin and the Bogolubo modes. And they, it will depend on, critically on some quantities. These quantities are basically the scattering length. Um, of the collisions between the, the atoms in the optical lattices and the BEC, so the strength of the collision, basically the direction, uh, and the scattering length of the BEC itself, obviously. And then uh, this L is the distance uh, it's here between the two wells. Okay. <coughs> what, sorry, yes. what is the last term? Um, the last term, um, well, it will not play an effect. As a matter of fact, these terms, um, it's, it's in this defacing model, we'll only um, introduce um, some phase factors that for one qubits are basically irrelevant when I have a one qubit description. But for a modern qubit, I have to consider also. So what, so is, what is this? Is it a letter, the operator, or only? It just comes out from the transformation into the volume of modes. I don't know physically. I mean, uh, what physically does when I look at the dynamics of the spin is to introduce a phase factor, but it comes simply from the passage from the previous formalism to the, to the next one. I can't think of any specific uh, interpretation of it at this point. But can you actually do it? Sorry? Driving term. Well, I mean, uh, driving in the volume of modes, but how do you displace this one? Yeah, it's, of course, it's a sort of displacement of the excitations in the Bogolubov modes, but I can't see physically uh, more interpretation of that. Yes, I don't know, if this tells you something, then yes, it's, it's, it's a displacement in the Bogolubov modes. I don't know. As a matter of fact. I mean, I know what happens uh, in the dynamic. What is the consequence of this presence of the... Um, of this term in the dynamics, as I said before, it introduces the space part, but um, a physical interpretation of this in the context of Bogolivo and Newtonian cannot. Perhaps more details are in the, in the paper in which this model is derived. Okay, now from this stage, of, this is Hamiltonian of the total closed system. I can derive from this stage a master equation for the qubit only. I will not do any approximation. The only thing I will do is I will trace out the degrees of freedom of the, of the bath and obtain a master equation for the qubit only. And this, so from here to the master equation is exact. No approximation done. The form of this master equation is this one the exact form of the mass equation. So, it, first of all, it's time local. There is no time recurring. Uh, the second thing is, uh, there is a, a, a time-dependent um, frequency shift. Um, it, it's sort of a lump shift, but time-dependent. And then there are some time-dependent decay rates. 
And the form of the decay rates, of course, is complicated. It depends on the energies of, of the Bogolubov modes. It depends on the distance between the two wells. Uh, it depends tau is the trapping potential. Uh, and uh, so it depends on a series of parameters. Of course, it depends on the scattering length between the atom and the BEC, but most crucially it depends on the scattering length of the BEC, so how strongly the BEC is interacting. So there are a series of parameters coming into play and all affecting, uh, let's say, the form of this quality. Of course, uh, the, 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 it is immediate, if you have familiarity with this type of master equation, it's immediate to see that they just cause pure defacing in the system. So basically the diagonal elements are constant and the out of diagonal elements are decaying with a decay rate which is connected to this um, defacing rate here um, according to this relationship. So the, the capital gamma is just the integral of the defacing rate. And this enters the, the you know, describes the, the defacing of the out of diagonal elements of the density matrix. Uh, if I look at this uh, uh, in, uh, carefully, I can prove that there exists for these, for all changing all possible values of parameters, the Geneva scattering length, uh, the, the uh, AB scattering length, uh, the distance between uh, uh, the wells and everything, uh, you can see that there is at most one time interval for which this coefficient is negative. And I will call this time interval the extremes of the time intervals AB. So what happens is um, the only thing that can happen is that something like this. If I make a plot of this gamma of T, uh, this starts from some, I think, zero, and it's negative. Okay, this, uh, the system is such that that's the only thing which is allowed for this specific physical system. Uh, in this case, I can actually uh, demonstrate, I can prove that the non Markovianity measure um, defined before uh, can be simply written in a very simple analytical form. So you can perform analytical optimization of the pair, define the maximizing pair, and the non Markovianity measure is given by simply the value of the out of diagonal elements of the qubit at the time intervals B, A, and the initial one. This, this number quantifies the normal community of this channel. It's a straightforward cal calculation. And, this we can, and therefore, we can quantify information flow by measuring only the coherences at specific time intervals, actually, to be precise. So the, the uh, interesting point is, can we use this information to understand something physically on the system? Can, can, is it useful at all? Uh, and, and, and therefore, what we did was to study the non Markovianity and therefore the information flow in presence uh, of changing all the possible parameters, the zoology of the, the non Markovianity region. Uh, and again, we used realistic values of parameters, rubidium and sodium, and uh, obviously certain densities, uh, certain uh, lambda is the value of um, the, the wavelength of the uh, optical lattice. So, realistic parameters. Uh, and of course, the only thing is that um, we have to be careful because uh, we, we are assuming uh, to have a dilute and weakly interacting gas. So when we change the scattering length of the BC, we can't change it too much. So we can't increase the strength of interaction of the BC indefinitely. I mean, we have a, a limit consistent with that um, weakly interacting gas approximation. So the two, changing all these parameters doesn't change much except for two of them. There are two critical parameters. One is the scattering length of the reservoir, and the other one is the distance between the wells. They are the critical ones. Now, what happens to the non for a 3D uh, BEC? What happens to the non Markovianity measure when I change the interaction strength? So the scattering length of the BEC. I mean, here I'm considering to have a more and more interacting gas, BEC, until a limit in which I don't break the weak coupling assumption. What happens is that for any value of the other parameters, there is, a, um, let's say, a value of the scattering length which corresponds to an onset of non Markovianity. So the system is Markovian initially. When, if I don't have strong enough interactions, the information flow goes only from the uh, qubit to the BC, never back. 
I need to have sufficiently strong interactions in the BEC to allow for some backflow of information and therefore no cordiality. So there is a critical value which is independent on all the other parameters uh, and, it's, and it's more or less here and we don't know why it's precisely this value. <laughs> so if you ask, no, I don't know. Uh, and, um, and then there is a second thing, is there is a change in the amount of non-Markoviality when changing the separation of the two wells of the double well. So increasing the separation of the two wells increases the non-Markoviality, the, the value of non-Markoviality measure. The reason uh, why this happens is instead something that we understand and has to do with the fact that if you look at the uh, time-dependent coefficient, Basically, there is um, changing L changes the form of the spectrum. There is some sort of filter function, it's a sync function, which filters the amount of spectrum which interacts with the system. So this means because our cubic has a spatial resolution, only modes having a wavelength bigger than the distance between the two potential wells can resolve the structure of the cubic and therefore can interact with the cubic, giving back flow of information. So the spatial dimension is, is crucial. Now. Is one. Mm -hmm. The wavelength uh, greater. Mm -hmm. Greater than the, than the distance? Yes. yes. Uh, it is... Uh, okay, wait a moment. Uh, wavelength uh, decreases uh, means uh, uh, frequency is smaller. Uh, um, wait, wait a moment. No, it is the opposite. It's all the all the frequencies having um, uh, the, 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 all the frequencies of the Bogolyubov modes, which are bigger than the frequency of the oscillator, can resolve them all. So, in the, for the wavelengths, it's the opposite, of course. Thank you. Another important aspect that I want to underline here is the dependence. So I, I, I described before the dependency on the uh, scattering length and on the uh, and on the um, distance between the two wells. But now, what happens if I change the dimensionality of the gas? So what I'm doing here is that I'm going from a, I consider it three different phases. The first phase is a three-dimensional BC. The second case is a quasi 2D gas, and the third case is a quasi 1D gas. So the pancakes or the cigar uh, BC. And what happens is that there is an influence, uh, so basically the, the uh, non Markoviality measure changes, but also the onset of non Markoviality changes. So what happens is, depending on the dimensionality of the gas, I can uh, bar, I can. Um, I, I do observe, we do observe a different value for onset of non-Markoviality such that in 3D the system becomes non-Markovian non for weaker values of the coupling strength than uh, for 2D and 1D case. So I think that um, we do have an interpretation uh, for this um, thing related to the form of the spectrum. I mean, in one case we have a subomic, in another case an omic or a superomic reservoir, and it is possible to, to demonstrate that for pure defacing, in order to have backflow of information, you need to have a value of S which is greater than 2. Uh, and, uh, and only for these cases you have a backflow of information, and therefore you can, you can see that in one d case, because you start with subomic when, when the scattering length is zero, you have to pass increasing s, you have to go from subomic to omic to superomic, and then the information can flow back. In 2D, you start with an omic reservoir, and then you go to superomic, and finally you can reach the backflow of information, while in the 3D case, you start with a superomic reservoir, and then you can immediately have backflow of information. That's why the critical value um, changes. I think I will basically summarize at this point uh, um, this part of the of the talk, and I will conclude. Um, I will give some conclusions. The first thing is the first thing to notice um, uh, from our result is that actually by changing the scattering length of the BC, we can engineer different types of reservoirs. 
which are omic, subomic, or superomic. And therefore, we can study fundamental properties of open quantum system dynamics with this model. The second, uh, and this is associated with the system being a good candidate for, for simulating both Markovian and non-Markovian open quantum systems. The second idea is that when you look at, I looked at just one, yeah, this is my idea of full, I won't, uh, but again, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, the second thing is if I consider the register, you know, uh, and we looked only at one impurity, but if you look at the older register, then by changing the scattering length again, you can find the regions of the dynamics for which, due to backflow of information, properties like entanglement in the register persist longer. So you have more resistant uh, quantum registers for quantum information processing playing with the values of the parameters and the information flow. And finally, you can extend this treatment to study transport properties in tilted optical lattices, the thing that we are doing at the moment uh, with the group of people in action. And now just let me do something quick. I will simply skip this. Eh? I thank you for your attention. <laughs> But uh, in the case here, we are using uh, a normalized version of non Markovianity. So basically, in our measure is always between zero and one because we are actually calculating the information that goes out. Actually, sorry, the information that comes back normalized with the information that goes out because we are interested. We can do this because we have just one period of negativity. So we are not interested in the total information that goes out, but in how much of what went out comes back. So we use this ratio between them. So it's a normal, and this normalized quantity is, is bounded, is between zero and one. In the sense that you use some integral in time? It's just we divide the, between the two. I mean, the, we just consider the information uh, flow, the end, that goes out, and we consider how much of what goes out, the fraction of what goes out that comes back in the interval of time, in the interval of time, of course, yes, yes. That the transition from Markovian to non-Markovian is really it's truly transition in the sense that it's a broke, or it's something that decays exponentially and this is more? No, no, it's like this. Or maybe the, I can understand. So you can <laughs> see, is it, is this it, is, it, is it, not a big Exactly, so it decays exponentially, or no, the it's transition not point is a transition point. Well, it's, it's, it's yes, it is discontinued. Yes, there is discontinuity. Yes. Probably this discontinuity comes from the definition because you only take the, the, the strictly negative parts of the, of the flow. If you take, for example, the positive as, with positive sign and the negative with negative sign, probably you will have a smooth transition. Uh, I, I take both the positive and the negative in the definition. Mm, the I mean, I divide what goes back. No, but you only count the. In the, the, this, the, well, the question formula in which yes. the, the question oh, yes, was positive part. Yes, yes. We just yes. sum, okay, we say that the positive part. You sum yeah, yeah, all okay. the parts with the respective sign. Yes. Probably the, the threshold will In that case, we say that it's non Markovian, obviously. And so we sum the parts in which we observe backflow of information. Because if we don't observe backflow of information, by definition, we say that it is Markovian. So the measure is zero. So whenever I don't have backflow information, the measure is zero. Well, this is the origin of the transi of the sharp of transition. the sharp transition. Yes, yes, of course. Um, okay, so it's a different field. In, in quantum transport electrons, if you consider in this correct uh, equation formulas, and then if you don't include normal Markovian corrections, you may have any of some violations. So, in your field, if you include this normal identity, um, is there any uh, in in the violation of some of physical property? Um, well, in the, in, in the case of the Markovian master equation in the Lindblad form, they can always be associated to situations in which the fluctuation uh, dissipation theory is satisfied, so you don't have this problem. But you can have some other um, cases in which the form is not Lindblad like. So, I still have a positive and constant time-dependent coefficients, 
but I don't have a lingot form, and I don't know if I can repass it in the lingot form. And there, there are examples of violation of fluctuation dissipation um, relationships. There are, I, I mean, at least I, I read a paper by, well, you don't know about the students, in which she was shown in study this specific. So there are examples, but never in the case in which you have the Markovianity in the sense of the lingot form. You can, but then uh, there you can, you are safe, yes. In the optical experiments, you didn't yes. discuss, uh, what was given guidance to the non Markovianity in the optical realization? Uh, they it? change, if I remember correctly, they change uh, the, uh, so they have a cavity, yes, and they change the, it's like they change the quality factor of the cavity and at the same time the, the tuning from the cavity. So uh, I assume that this is a, like an orientation trick. And what they change is like the Q, the quality factor, uh, so this means the width of this range is one of the parameters, and how far the tunes you are from the range. So for example, if you are the tune from the range, then you have the normal coreality. If you are here and, uh, and sufficiently large, then the system is not holding. If I remember correctly, but I should check again. So I, I think this is not, but it's not a real heavy, so they simulate a heavy, because it's all uh, done with the, um, let's say, it's, it's, it's only done with the light and polarization of spins, polarization of light. Any other questions or comments? No, you understand. Thank you.